and I have to say, this is a scout car that I didn't like very much until I saw the improved Israeli version. So here is the M3A1 white scout car. The forerunner of this car was designed in 1933 by White and was based on a 4x4 van chassis produced by their subsidiary Indiana. The prototype T7 was an open top scout car armed with two 12.7mm 50 caliber machine guns and two 7.62mm 30 cal machine guns, which carried a crew of four men. The vehicle was placed into production and given the designation M1 with a total of 76 cars produced. The M2 followed in 1935. It was bigger and more powerful and could carry a crew of seven, but only 20 of these vehicles were ever produced. White went on to produce the M3 version of the Scout car and had delivered 64 to the US Army by 1938. Marmon Harrington, and I believe they were of Maryland, but of course they were produced in South Africa as well. They were one of my favourite armour cars by the way, I will do a video on them very soon. Also produced a number of these scout cars for Iran. Now I didn't know that. The M3A1 entered service in 1940 and would remain in production until 1944 by which time some 20,856 scout cars had been built fast and very reliable. It was well liked by its crews, but its cross-country performance was poor and it was soon replaced by the half-track for many tasks. To help improve its off-road capacity a roller was fitted to the front of the car. The open fighting compartment was a serious weakness. The men were very exposed and the rear was a grenade trap. However, it was fitted However, it was fitted with a machine gun ring mount that allowed the machine guns to give an all-round field of fire. General Patton used one as a command vehicle but had additional armour fitted and raised around the fighting compartment. The M3A1E1 was developed to increase the range and fuel economy of the vehicle. This model was fitted with the 58 kilowatt or 78 horsepower Bubba Lenava diesel engine and had a speed of 54 miles per hour. All of these vehicles, the total production of which was 3,340, were sent to Russia. Most of the M3 scout cars in British service were used in secondary roles, being issued to units like the Engineers, Signals and Medical Corps. Some of these vehicles were to remain in service with a number of countries after World War II, in particular the French and, of course, the Israelis did some magnificent conversions and I'm going to try and find some pictures for the end of this video. They basically up armoured them and they put roofs and turrets on them. I mean, they look so cool. I've actually got one in my diecast collection right now that's waiting to be converted into an Israeli one. Looking forward to getting that done over the summer. M3A1 stats. Country, USA. Entered service 1940, crew 2 plus 6 infantry, weight 5.53 tonnes, dimensions, length 18 feet 5 inches, height 6 feet 6 inches, width 6 feet 8 inches, armament, main armament, 12.7 millimetre 5 inch browning machine gun, secondary, 230 calibre machine guns. Armour, maximum thickness, 5 inches. Power plant, white Hercules JX D6 cylinder. Rated at 95 horsepower and of course a petrol engine. Performance, speed, 65 miles per hour. And range, 250 miles. So where was they used and for what role? And we're going to tell you that now. So the United States operated the M3A1, was used by cavalry units of the US Army. 
in theatres such as North Africa and the invasion of Sicily. Then they used the faster and more reliable version, which was supplemented with the M2 half-track, of course, and the M3. So throughout 1943, they also was used with the M8, with the M8 Greyhound, absolutely love that scout car, and the M20 Utility car. They are also employed in Normandy and used by the US Marines in the Pacific Theater, but none saw combat. So more than likely they were used as logistical support, of course, armored ambulances, um, command cars and wireless vehicles. I would imagine not just on places like Saipan, but of course on the like Marshall Islands, um, the Backwater Islands, of course. I wouldn't be surprised if they were there as well. But more than likely, they would have been used as logistical support vehicles because, of course, the terrain on these Pacific Islands, especially during the monsoons, was just was just so treacherous and appalling. Of course, General Patton, of course, which was his command car, of course, modified with the armour of the fighting compartment. Then we have a total of 11,000... 401 M3A1 scout cars that were allocated for supply under Lend Lease. 6,987 were supplied to the British and Commonwealth, 3,310 to the Soviet Union, 104 to the Chinese, and some were supplied to the Free Belgium Army, Free French, Czechoslovakia, and Polish units. So now we have Britain. So the scout car was regarded as an armoured truck, which was given the designation Truck 15 CWT 4x4 Armoured Personnel. And this was used not just for the engineers and artillery regiments as an observation vehicle, but of course for the medical corps as of course a armoured ambulance, the signals, so of course the wireless operators, and I have covered some of that equipment on my Leyland Retriever video, which was the beginning of last year. And it was also used with the Royal Armoured Corps to do with the Armoured Car Regiments and, of course, the Royal Tank Corps. So then we have the Soviet Union. They were used as armoured personnel carriers and brigade headquarters and reconnaissance cars with motorcycle battalions and they also operated alongside the BA-64 armoured car, another one of my all-time favourites. Don't worry, I will do a video on that very soon. And of course, they were used as armoured command vehicles and with the gun tractors, which of course were the Zil 3s which was the Soviet Union's primary artillery tractor and supply truck. And they were of course used with the 76mm field gun. But they were also used not just as command cars, but also as artillery tractors as well. Would you call that forward thinking? I mean, it doesn't look like any other army did, but uh, why not? And they remained widespread throughout the war and post-war. And I actually think that's how the Russians got their armoured zins as well during the early stages of the Korean War. Because if you look at the front end of them, it's basically just a white scout car or a half-track with a roof and a machine gun. So then we have China. So China recovered the scout cars from 1942 throughout the Second Sino-Japanese War and the Chinese Civil War. So more than likely they were in post-war service as well. And talking about post-war service, we come on to post-war service now. So most of them were sold to the Asian and Latin American countries, as well as remained in Soviet service until 1947, and quite a few vehicles was used in the 1948 Arab-Israeli war, which I was talking about earlier, to do with the modified armour on the roof and the turrets, and the first Indochina war. Now, I didn't know that. Also, by late 1990, the only country that still had them in service, yes, in 1990, as late as that, the reason why I'm shocked is because 
I was born five years later. And it's just surprised me that they were still in service in late 1990. But there you go. And like I said, these vehicles were built to last. And if you've ever seen the film Kelly's Heroes, most of the US equipment in that are actually Yugoslavian army vehicles, even in 1969, was the Dominican Republic. Now, more than likely, they're probably in armies like the Mexican army, maybe even the Chilean army, as um, parade cars. I don't know. And, of course, in many museums around the world and at military shows such as the Yorkshire Wartime Experience, where I go to every year, held near Leeds. So these are the Second World War operators. We have Australia, Belgium, Canada, Free Czechoslovakia, Free French, Dutch East Indies. Now, I did not know that. 40 vehicles out of an order of 400 were delivered, which more than likely they were also used by Japan. It doesn't actually say it on this list, but more than likely, as long as they weren't destroyed by the Dutch, they would have been definitely used by the Japanese. And I wonder what they thought of them. China, Nazi Germany as well, captured vehicles. Of course, you're talking after Normandy, possibly even to do with the Anzio landings and Sicily. And more than likely, the bulk of these fell into German service during the Ardennes Offensive, of course, the Battle of the Bulge from the 16th of December 1944. We also have New Zealand. They were used by the second New Zealand Division engineering units. We have the Polish Armed Forces in the West, Soviet Union, and of course the United Kingdom, my country, and of course the United States. So post war, we have Brazil 100, Cambodia 15, used by the Cambodian Army from 19. 54 to 1975 i mean i'm surprised how long these lasted i mean they were built to last of course but really surprised so then we have china and of course the people's republic of china captured them from the chinese nationalist army during the chinese civil war um i don't know probably 1947 48 i don't really know anything about that we have Chile, Cambodia, Costa Rica, Czechoslovakia, Dominican Republic, of course, till 1990. Dutch East Indies, which is now um, like Malaysia and all them countries. We also have El Salvador, France, Greece, Israel. We have the Kingdom of Laos, which had 15 used by their army during their civil war, 1954 to 1975 Lebanon Liberia Mexico Norway Philippines Poland Portugal used them in Africa during the Portuguese colonial war never heard of 1961 to 74 odd how all these wars ended in 1974 but there you are South Vietnam Soviet Union United Nations captured vehicles the by from the Congolese army used by ONUC forces. If you know what that means, do type in the comments. Then we have Venezuela and Yugoslavia had 300 after the war, and we also have the state of Kat Angola, which is a state in Africa, I believe it's French Swahil, wherever that is, Swahil, Swahili, um, but yeah, they were also used by that state during whatever war they had. So yeah, that's a little bit more background information for you modelers out there, of course, because if you was doing dioramas or just making a model of this, or even if you were just doing a Code 3 like I am, then at least you know what countries used it. And you don't always have to do it in the American colours. I mean, they can be really, really boring. Everybody does that. So, you know, be a little adventurous. Once the armoured car of mine is done, it's a 143rd scale by Atlas. That is going to be on my Inside the Diecast Model Room channel, 
but that's actually changing its name tonight to Diecast Days. I'm also going to update my Instagram page as well. So if you are interested to see that, I'm going to put it on there. I'm going to do a link below once that video's on. And I may just do a special small five minute video to do with that and if I can find any more information on this as well. Try and piece the two videos together possibly. Anyway, I've been going on for too long now, so you have a good one. I will definitely see you on Wednesday for five minute ish history. Hopefully I haven't said that the wrong the wrong way around. I'm quite tired tonight. And then of course at weekend there will be some more hopefully armoured cars. I'm actually looking at the M3 75mm mortar carriage which is basically the half track i have a model of one of these in the model room so you never know that might be next have a good one i'll see you on wednesday and fingers crossed on saturday bye bye